What's going on, everyone? So we are now in day three of free agency. And so far, at least at the time of recording this video, uh, there has been no moves from the Lakers. I understand it's frustrating, right? You missed out on Klay Thompson. That was the piece Lakers were waiting around for, right? A lot of people blame Rob Polinka, but clearly Klay didn't want to come to Lakers. Lakers, based on reports, offered him four years, 80 million. He took three years, 50 million. So he took less money to go to Dallas than more money going to the Lakers. So, you know, I saw this sentiment going around of like, oh, Rob didn't even try and all that. No, he did. I mean, he threw everything at him, right? The Warriors, they didn't really want to trade uh, with the Lakers. Uh, they didn't really want D'Lo, even though he's an expiring contract. They wanted the Dallas Mavericks package more. So, Clay, again, and I've talked about this before, when other t players give other teams an option, more times than not, the Lakers are going to miss out on those guys, right? Like Donovan Mitchell, right? DeMar DeRozan, all these guys. When the market is limited, more times than not, they're going to go to Lakers, right? Because the Lakers offer the, the best deal. But when there are a plethora of teams, well, guess what? The Lakers end up missing out because there's just more to offer from some of these teams. And with the new just way that the world works with social media and brand deals and all these things, there's not this big market allure like there are in other areas. And Clay believed that the Lakers weren't in as good of a shape as the Dallas Mavericks, which, I mean, in his defense, he's right, right? Dallas was just in the NBA Finals. So he's probably looking at it as like the Lakers are probably several pieces away, even more than me, which he wouldn't be wrong, right? Clay Thompson coming to Lakers doesn't automatically make them a contender, right? Clay wasn't like the missing piece, and now the Lakers are the best team in the league, right? No, it was one of those things where, okay, if you can acquire Clay, you're a step closer, right? Now you may only need two more guys rather than like four or five, right? So that, of course, is frustrating. And I understand people's frustrations, but we got to remain patient. We got to see what ends up being the first domino as well as what moves are to be made. Because right now we all want to grab our pitchforks and torches and, you know, go after them, right? But what happens if the Lakers, which it's appearing like it's very likely going to be the case, do land DeMar DeRozan? All signs point to DeMar DeRozan is going to be a Laker one way or another. The Lakers are trying to work out a three-team deal to acquire DeMar DeRozan. Uh, otherwise, there are talks that he may be interested in signing for the mid-level exception for just kind of one year uh, and then kind of just live out his dream of playing for the Lakers. And then, you know, if the Lakers can't pay him more, he'll probably go elsewhere. That's always a possibility. But let's say you get DeMar. Again, DeMar DeRozan... One is better than Clay. Clay might have been the better natural fit, but I actually think DeMar DeRozan has or, and will have a huge impact on this Lakers roster, like bigger than people think. Again, I could be wrong. And if the Lakers land DeMar DeRozan, I'll break it down more. I'll, I'll go more in depth, more into detail. I just don't want to spend 20 minutes and he ends up not coming, especially the way that the Lakers track record has been lately. But what if if the Lakers do get DeMar DeRozan? Hopefully that's the first domino. Whether it's trade or the, the mid-level exception, I don't mind acquiring him via trade if you can get a quality piece with the mid-level exception, right? Can you go get a Miles Bridges or the Lakers are in the need for a point guard? Although I think I'd probably like to just go with Dorian Finney, or uh, uh, not Dorian Finney, but Spencer Dinwiddie. There we go. Um, I'd rather go with him as like the backup point guard, or, I mean, you could even start him as your point guard if you need be, but regardless, if the Lakers need a point guard, Tyus Jones, maybe bring him in, maybe even break up the mid-level into like two pieces. Um, in a perfect world, like I said, you get like a Miles Bridges to pair alongside a DeMar DeRozan, but it's very possible that DeMar DeRozan could be the first domino to fall to where it's like, okay, oh, we got DeMar. Oh, and we got, you know, Cam Johnson. Oh, and we just got... Brooke Lopez or whatever, right? And it's like, oh, now the Lakers are in business, right? Now the Lakers actually, wait, time out. We are a contending. We are one of the top, you know, three teams in the Western Conference or one of the top three teams in the entire league. Depending on how things shape up, depending on how this roster looks, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I don't think the Lakers are far from these teams, right? I think the Lakers, if they get just like three 
high-end quality pieces. DeMar would be one. If you get a Miles Bridges or a Cam Johnson, there's two. And then can you get one more? Right? Can you, is there a way to go get one more guy, whoever that ends up being? And I think the Lakers are right there with everyone else. I mean, even this past year, the the consensus was the Lakers are there. Like, if they were in the Dallas bracket, they are coming out the West and they're in the NBA Finals playing Boston rather than the Dallas Mavericks. It was just like that one team, Denver. They just seem to have our number. So one team we can't seem to get over the hump. And unfortunately, they were the ones that eliminated us. But still, like even this year, even if we did run it back, which I don't want to do, we definitely need a trade. But even if we did run it back, we would be much better, right? Because hopefully guys are healthy. Not only if guys are healthy, but guys should be better, could you get another year of chemistry and, and building that foundation, those relationships. And more than anything, you'd have a better head coach in J.J. Reddy. Can't be much worse than Darvin Ham was. So with that, just those three things, naturally, you're going to be better. But the Lakers need, if they really want to be a true contender and not just like, oh, they have a puncher's chance because they have LeBron James and Anthony Davis. No, you want to really start piecing together and putting together a higher quality team. I think DeMar DeRozan is a perfect, just kind of spot. I mean, I've been screaming for DeMar DeRozan since the last trade deadline, right? When the Lakers sh- should have probably gotten him, but Chicago wasn't willing to blow, blow it up. And so to me, if you can get him, step in the right direction. But you got to get more. What's that other piece? What's the other move? What's the other step? In a perfect world, like I said, it's a Miles Bridges, but even if it's not a Miles Bridges, you got to get some type of perimeter 3 and D wing, in my opinion. Brooklyn apparently really wants D'Angelo Russell. Can you work it out to where you can land not only DeMar DeRozan, but a Cam Johnson or even a Dorian Finney-Smith? I know every time I mention Dorian Finney-Smith, I get a couple people that are like, ah, he's trash, he's this, that. He's a prototypical 3 and D guy, and the Lakers don't have even one of them right now at that can slot and play the three. You have Rui, who's excellent on the offensive side, terrible defensive. You have Vanderbilt, who's elite defensively, terrible offensively. Whether you like Dorian Finney-Smith or not, he is a legit 3 and D piece that we desperately need and would slot in beautifully, right? Like, he would slot in just seamlessly alongside DeMar and whoever else we have, can knock down the three ball, can defend the best player on the other team. He's got good size. It, and it's about what's realistic. It's about what's a real option. You know, yeah, I'd love Jeremy Grant, but he's making $30 million a year. Portland's never traded with the Lakers in the history of their existence. And, you know, is, is he committed? Is he bought? The Lakers tried to trade for him before, and they didn't. And he didn't want to join the the Lakers. Right? They, they actively tried, and he basically said he didn't want to be a third option. And he's repeatedly talked about how he wants to be, uh, he, he loves it in Portland and, you know, he's he wants to stay and all that stuff, which, again, not everybody wants to be a third fiddle. Not everyone wants to be a third option. Not everyone wants to win a championship. Not everyone wants to compete for a championship. He's making $30 million a year to be in Portland and just live his best life and take a bunch of threes and shoot a bunch of shots and take 20 attempts per game and do whatever he wants. He's basically the guy there. I mean, look at Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma could have just won another championship. They had a deal done for him to go to the Dallas Mavericks and he said, I already did that with LeBron and AD. I don't want to be a third fiddle again. I'd rather stay here with me and Jordan Poole. You know, we can pull some baddies after the game, and we can just, you know, hoop. I, like, that's what he cares about. That's his priority. So, you know, yeah, it, it's about what's realistic. It's about what can be obtained, and it's about what fills the holes and needs that we have as a roster. Right? LeBron is trying. Put his money where his mouth is. We now have to do right by him by trying to find the proper pieces to put around him and Anthony Davis and try to go get a chip. I, again, I don't think there's, I don't, even with all the upgrades, even with the Thunder and, you know, and the Knicks and you know, Paul George to the Sixers, I don't look at any of these teams and go, they are, they are Kevin Durant on the Warriors. 
right? The, all these teams are very beatable. All these teams, if the Lakers put together the right kind of cast around Anthony Davis and LeBron James, could be right there in the conversation and could be right there in June. It's just you got to be able to do that. LeBron did his part. We got to start doing our part. And hopefully today is the day that we get the first move. I'm not saying you have to do everything today, but it'd be nice to kind of get that first domino of like, okay, and then we can all kind of exhale and go, all right, at least we know something's coming. And at least we know a storm is a brewing, right? So, anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Best question to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, you know, are you excited uh, for what's potential to come? Do you want DeMar DeRozan? Do you not? Do you want somebody else? Um, now, do you think that they finally make a move today? Or do you think, like, no, they'll take the time? Again, I don't care how long it takes. You know, if you take another week, take another week, right? I don't care as long as... They do what is necessary. As long as they get what they need to get so we can go contend. I am all for it. But anyway, again, how you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. It's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell and notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.